uh, we're going to go next to our uh, speaker, um, Tinko, um, that uh, um, is going to present about uh, robust ar uh, arithmetics for geometric algorithms and applications to GIS. Uh, Tinko, just a quick introduction um, of yourself. Uh, he's a recent uh, master degree uh, graduate from in mathematics, and he currently works as a research assistant at the Technical University of Berlin. Um, Tinko, I'm just gonna let you, um, uh, if you can, uh, share your presentation, and I'm gonna let you present very quickly. Okay. okay. Uh, does it work? Yes, uh, it should okay. work in about uh, a few seconds. There's always some slight delay between the... Uh, um, actually, it's... Uh, now it's gone through. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so I can start. Yeah. Okay, so yes, I will talk about uh, fast, robust arithmetics for geometric algorithms and applications to GIS. And this talk is based on a GSOC project that I did with uh, Vasarion Physikopoulos for um, boost geometry. So we care about uh, robust arithmetics in particular with respect to geometric predicates. And geometric predicates are functions that um, take geometries and answer elementary questions about them. So, for example, the 2D orientation predicate is a geometric predicate that takes three points from the plane, P, Q, and R. And it tells us whether R lies to the left of, on, or to the right of the oriented line through P and Q. And this geometric predicate can be computed by evaluating the sign of the determinant of the matrix that you see on the slide. And if you look at the matrix, then you see that the determinant would be a polynomial of second degree. So in real arithmetic, this would be straightforward to compute. And these geometric predicates are often used as um, subroutines of larger geometric algorithms or spatial predicates. So for example, the 2D orientation predicate is used in the point within polygon spatial predicate. So if we want to determine whether a point lies inside, on, or outside of a polygon, uh, we would have an algorithm that repeatedly calls the 2D orientation predicate with respect to the point and the variance polygon segments. Or another example would be the um, construction of triangulations. So if we want to construct a triangulation of oriented triangles, we would um, repeatedly call the 2D orientation predicate to determine whether the triangle should be ABC or ACB, for example. And another example of a geometric predicate would be the 2D encircled predicate. And this one can be used to verify the Delaunay property if we want to construct a Delaunay triangulation. And this is a predicate that takes uh, four points and it checks whether the fourth point lies uh, inside, on, or outside of the circumcircle of the first three points. Okay, so I said uh, with uh, real arithmetic, it's straightforward. It's usually the sign of some polynomial. But um, with floating point arithmetic, there, can, there are a few issues that can arise. So the first issue with floating point arithmetic is that it cannot represent um, real numbers exactly in general. So for example, um, for the real number 0 0.1, the closest approximation in double precision would be closer to um, this number. 
And as a consequence, we also cannot, in general, compute um, arithmetic operations exactly. So if we compute the sum of two numbers in floating point arithmetic, we would um, get a result that is within some relative error of the true result. And the relative error can be given by a machine epsilon, which depends on the floating point numbers uh, system. So for example, there's single precision or double precision. So as a consequence of this rounding, um, we can get uh, incorrect signs for our polynomials and thereby incorrect results for our geometric predicates. Um, for example, for the 2D orientation predicate, um, an incorrect result could occur if we give it three points that are almost collinear, so almost lie on a straight line. Um, okay, so why should we care about this? Uh, even if we do not care about precision so much, um, if we repeatedly use geometric predicates in some construction and we get incorrect results for some calls, this could introduce uh, inconsistencies in our construction. So it, even if we uh, would not have, have an issue with some incorrectly oriented and triangles, um, the incorrect results could um, crash our triangulation algorithm or cause infinite loops or the construction of triangulations that have some illegal structure. So how can we mitigate those issues? Um, a straightforward way would be to use some um, arbitrary precision library. But um, if we would do that for all geometric predicates, we would be a lot slower than using native floating point operations. So um, we can mitigate this performance penalty by using floating point filters. Um, a floating point filter is a function that um, takes the arguments of the predicate and it either returns um, uh, an answer if it can prove that the answer is correct and if the inputs are degenerate and it cannot prove the correctness of the answer, it will return that it is uncertain. And in this case, we can proceed with a more precise filter or with the exact computation. So the idea here is that we can decide non-degenerate cases quickly with the filter. And for degenerate cases, we can go into the exact stage. And we would usually expect that there are relatively few degenerate inputs. So there are some existing implementations of these ideas. Um, the first one that we mentioned is uh, implementation by Shuchak from uh, that he presented in 1997. Um, he implemented uh, four predicates the 2D and 3D orientation predicate and the in-circle and in-sphere predicate. And he implemented each one using four stages. And the first three stages can be considered filters. And the last stage would be the exact stage. So the idea for the um, first filter in his predicates looks something like this. Um, this is the determinant um, of the matrix that I've shown earlier. And we compute the determinant with floating point operations and obtain its absolute value. And we compare this absolute value to, um, to an, the value of an expression that is an estimate on the error. So if the absolute value is larger than the error estimate, then we can be confident that the sign of the computed value is correct. And if it's smaller, smaller, then the sign might be incorrect. And then we would go to a stage of higher precision. And obtaining this error estimate or the expression for it 
requires uh, forward error analysis. And this can be tedious to do by hand and it can be error prone to implement. Um, other implementations are, for example, um, FPG, which was presented by Maya and Pion. Um, FPG is a code uh, generator uh, that can automatically generate um, filters for um, polynomial predicates. And another implementation are the filters in Seagull that also, or the predicates in Seagull that also have filters and exact stages to be fast and correct. Um, I already mentioned that our implementation was done during the uh, GSOC 2020. Um, you can find the code under this URL. And our approach is different. We also generate filters and exact stages for arbitrary polynomials. But um, we do not use code generation, but we do it at compile time. So we have a header only library that can just be included without further build steps and without further dependencies, except for boost. And it allows the developer of a geometric algorithm to um, specify any polynomial and to obtain filters and exact stages for it at compile time. Our implementation is also extensible. So the developer using the library can use our generated filters and combine them with uh, custom filters that are implemented by hand. So an example for that could be, for example, um, the in-circle predicate. One could use uh, error bound filter as the first stage and a custom stage that just checks whether all four points are on the corners of a rectangle, which would be a common degenerate case for the in-circle predicate. Um, to use our library, the um, polynomial expression for the predicate needs to be specified in a C++ syntax at compile time. And then we generate a filter based on forward error analysis. And the ideas that this process is based on are similar to the stage A filter as presented by Schutcher. And we also generated, generate exact stages similar to Schutcher. Um, the process is based on floating point expansion arithmetic. And yes, the details of that idea can be found as stage D in Schutcher's paper. Yes, uh, I mentioned our implementation is extensible. So it's also possible to generate further filters, for example, with uh, interval number types as in Seagull, or with, or one could generate exact stages using um, exact number types, like uh, using GMP or MPFR. So this is an example of how to generate a fast, robust predicate with our implementation. So at first we specify a polynomial. Um, this is uh, a representation of the 2D orientation polynomial. And uh, the syntax here is based on uh, STD placeholders. And this polynomial is meant to express that the, we want um, the third argument minus the first argument and so on. After specifying a polynomial, we specify what filter we want to use. So we want a forward error analysis based filter for um, the polynomial that we specified above and for double precision arguments. And after that, further filters could be specified, but we only have one in this example. And finally, we specify that we want the exact stage for the same polynomial and also for double arguments. And then we state that we want a 
stage predicate that first goes uh, through the filter and if the filter fails, goes to the exact stage. Um, we did some performance comparisons. So um, the first test that we did is based uh, on the point in polygon predicate. So we um, took a polynomial, uh, a polygon of 23,000 points that represents uh, Russia. And we generated uh, 20,000 random points. So the first uh, 10,000 points were uniformly distributed. And for those points, we found that um, an implementation of the point in polygon test that uses our um, robust predicates is about 25% or so slower than a non-robust version. So um, yes, our filter, of course, adds uh, some cost, but it does not get slower by an order of magnitude or something like that. The performance is still comparable. And yes, we gain robustness by it. And we also tested with points that lie close to the boundary. Uh, the performance difference was a little bit lower for that one. And with the points that were generated to be close to the boundary, we found many examples that were not correctly determined by non-robust predicates, but only using robust predicates. Uh, the second performance comp comparison was done for uh, Delaunay triangulation. So we used the uh, um, Delaunay triangulation algorithm of Seagull, and we ran it with uh, different predicates. So we used uh, simple non-robust predicates, our implementation, um, Shuchak's predicates, and the predicates in Seagull. And we compared the performance for three uh, data sets. The first data set were just uniformly distributed points. Um, the second data set was for points that were randomly chosen from a grid. And the third uh, data set was, uh, was from a triangulated irregular networks from a GIS data set. And in all cases, of course, uh, the non-robust predicates were the fastest, but um, the robust predicates were still comparable in performance, so not slower by orders of magnitude. And in all cases, we found that our implementation was competitive in performance to existing implementations. Yes. Okay, so in conclusion, um, fast, robust predicates can help to make um, geometric algorithms and spatial predicates robust, and they only add um, or they add acceptable runtime cost, in our opinion. Um, our new implementation can be used for arbitrary polynomial predicate expressions, and it is a simple header-only library, so no code generation is required and no additional build steps. And the performance of our predicates was found to be competitive to existing solutions for robust predicates. Okay, so uh, these are the references that were used in the presentation and there are further references in the full paper. Okay. Um, yes. Are there any questions? Thank you, Tinko. Um, in fact, there are some questions. Um, so at least one question um, for now, but I'm sure that there will be others that come. So the first question that we got is um, if the filter calculation is run using the same floating point CTU operations, how can we trust that the filter calculations don't have floating point error themselves? Okay, so the idea is to um, compute and to get an error expression. I will go back some slides to the example. Um, so the idea is to 
obtain an error expression that can be um, evaluated in floating point precision, but is guaranteed to give us some value that is larger than the error of the original expression. So the error in this expression, or the value of this expression, if computed using floating point operations, will be larger than the difference of um, this expression to the true value when evaluated in floating point operations. And yes, there's a proof for that in Shuchak's original paper. So yes, there's a mathematical proof for it. It's based on forward error analysis. Thank you for your answer. Um... If there are any other questions, we can wait for a few more minutes before wrapping up. Um, if not, um, and or if you don't want to put them now, you can uh, probably contact Tinko on its uh, email. Uh, we have um, we have uh, provided all the information for all the speakers. Um, if you have additional questions. Um, to to contact them privately, either on um, on Venueless or um, by uh, private email um, or private contact that they provided. Let's just wait for another uh, seconds uh, for a few more seconds, um, so we can see if anybody else has more questions. I'll just uh, consider that perhaps uh, people are shy to ask more questions. Uh, so uh, thank you, Tinko, again for participating and for presenting. Um, it was a very interesting presentation, very mathematical. Um, and um, I'm really happy that you, you came and presented. Uh, and I really wish uh, that everybody that was to, in today's session has a very nice post for G, uh, you included, and uh, hope thank to see you, you around in Venue Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a lovely yeah. evening. Right. And don't forget, we have a gala dinner um, happening in a few uh, in a few hours.